Hello and welcome to this week's edition of The Olive Tree with me, Julia Fisher. At the heart of this program is one simple question. What is God doing in Israel today? To find answers to that question and navigate a way through the fog of the complex political and theological issues which seem to envelop this tiny country in the Middle East, each week I'm talking to believers who live there, both Jewish believers and Arab Christians. This week, my guest is David Brickner. He is the executive director of Jews for Jesus, and he's Jewish. Whilst his job is based in California, his parents live in Jerusalem, and he regularly visits the region. Jews for Jesus is well known for its uncompromising approach to evangelism. Their aim is to make Jesus, or Yeshua, an unavoidable issue to their own Jewish people around the world, and in so doing, see many Gentiles coming to faith too. For some years now, they've been running campaigns in all the major cities of the world where Jewish people live. These campaigns were called Behold Your God. Recently, they felt the time had come to take this campaign to Israel, and today there is a Jews for Jesus team operating there. It's not easy. There is stiff opposition, as you will hear. So, I asked David... Why have you decided to launch this campaign now? We believe that God is working in the hearts of Israelis at this time as no time before since perhaps the first century. Uh, the greatest openness to the gospel uh, among Jewish populations around the world is the Jewish population in Israel. And, uh, you know, as we see the demographics change. There are now more Jews in Israel than anywhere else in the world except for North America. So we have our largest branch of Jews for Jesus in Israel. You've also got Arab Christians on your team. Now, some people might be surprised at that. Why is that? Well, Arabs and Jews together make sense if you understand the gospel. It's the gospel of peace. And when Arabs and Jews can say to one another, I love you in Jesus' name, then the world will really see what the power of the gospel can do. It brings peace where peace needs to start, and that's in the human heart. So how is the campaign developing, and what sort of a reaction are you getting from Jewish, secular Jewish people? Let's start there. Well, we are in the middle of what we call Operation Behold Your God, and it's a commitment to have saturation evangelistic outreaches in every major uh, area of the land of Israel. We take, take great encouragement from Jesus' words, you'll not finish going through the cities of Israel before the coming of the Son of Man. And so we've had campaigns in the Tel Aviv area, way up in the north in the Galilee, and uh, very soon in the Sharon, which is Petah Tikva, Herzliya, and uh, particularly among the secular, we've tr found tremendous openness. The only opposition that we're having is from the ultra-religious. And uh, we have a slogan that we've been using to advertise our campaign, Yeshu equals Yeshua equals Yeshua. Yeshu is what most Jewish people in Israel think is Jesus' name, but it's actually a medieval curse meaning may his name and memory be blotted out. His real name is Yeshua, which means salvation. And uh, Yeshua is God saves. And so we have these banners all over the place and people are really getting it. They're really beginning to understand that the most Jewish thing that you can do is believe in Jesus. And so through our bannering, through handing out literature, through phoning, we've had over 150 people pray with us to receive the Lord, and over 5,000 request copies of the New Testament, both in Hebrew and in Arabic. And so we're already following up on those 5,000, the 150 plus that have prayed. Many of them are getting baptized and getting into local Messianic congregations. It's thrilling to see that there's such openness among Israelis and Arabs in the land of Israel. The opposition from the ultra-Orthodox, what sort of form does it take and, and why are they so angry? Just tell me what's going on in their mind. Well, it's hard to know specifically, but the fact is that most Orthodox Jews believe that all of the suffering uh, of the past 2,000 years um, has been because of Jesus. They also believe that if uh, someone were to follow him as a Jew, that they would be committing spiritual suicide. And so they have genuine anger 
Um, and many of them will stop at nothing to prevent us from doing what we're doing because they see it as a major threat to the survival of the Jewish people. Of course, we believe that the most Jewish thing any Jew could do would be to believe in the Messiah. But because they're not persuaded of that, they will resort to you know physical violence, uh, rocks thrown. So far, we don't have any martyrs, and we hope that that you know stays. But I wouldn't be surprised if the first martyrs in the ministry of Jews for Jesus are martyred in Israel because uh, we've seen that kind of violence that can easily escalate mob violence. And there's a lot of Orthodox Jews, and they'll stop one another on the street and say, let's prevent these people. So the police have been so far very uh, good, and and the majority of the secular often will jump in to defend us. But uh, it does create quite a bit of tension, and uh, we're not backing down. We know what our rights are. We have the right to preach the gospel. Israel is a country that upholds freedom of religion. And uh, so we continue to proclaim, we'll continue to stand, and uh, we're going to continue to see God bless. Does it take a Jew to win a Jew for Christ, or can Christians play their role? Does the church have a role to play to help you? The Apostle Paul said in Romans 11 that salvation has come to the Gentiles in order to provoke Israel to jealousy. 65% of the staff members of Jews for Jesus have come to faith in Christ through the witness of a Gentile Christian. It is absolutely the role and responsibility of the church to preach the gospel to their Jewish friends and neighbors, to be a part of what we're doing in Israel as well. And so what I'm saying to the church is, hey, look at what's going on in Israel. Come on over and help us. Uh, Christians are you know, perhaps sometimes even more effective as witnesses to their Jewish friends. Because when Jews realize that this kind of loving person, uh, it's because of Jesus that they have such love for the Jewish people, that makes a huge impression. And for me as a Jew, oftentimes I'm considered a traitor. Uh, They don't want to listen to me, but they'll listen to, let's say, even um, an Asian or an African Christian because they can't saddle them with the anti-Semitism of uh, European history or things of that sort. And so we're really encouraging the church the world over to have a heart for Israel, have a love for the Jewish people, and the greatest way to demonstrate that love is to share God's greatest gift of love in Jesus and the gospel. You have a relatively small team. You create a lot of reaction. What is the secret to your methodology? Well, it's just being straightforward with the message of the gospel. The gospel is spiritual TNT. And, uh, you know, we've just been very forthright and upfront. We do have a small team, but we have a lot of people praying for us. We have a good number of volunteers. And as much as Uh, rabbis and other Jewish religious leaders would like to deny it. The fact is there's a tremendous amount of curiosity in the Jewish community about the person of Jesus. And after all, his footprints are everywhere in the land of Israel, and yet most Israelis don't even know how to say his name right. Uh, Only 5% of Israelis know about the resurrection. The most Uh, that they know in terms of a miracle that Jesus performed was that he was supposed to walk on water. Now, how can you know the gospel if you don't even know about the resurrection? And so we're absolutely convinced that the biggest reason why Israelis are not following Jesus is they don't know who he is and they don't know what he did. And that's the gospel. And that's why we need to get out there and proclaim it. There must be certain guidelines, though, that it's a good idea to follow. What advice would you give to a Christian? Because many Christians visit Israel as part of a tour. What would you say to them? I would say not to be afraid, but to look to engage people with questions. Have Israelis thought much about the person of Jesus living in this land where his presence has been so significant for world history? What do you think about Jesus? Remember Jesus himself said to his disciples, who do men say that I am? And then who do you say that I am? And that, even today, is the most important question for anyone to answer. So to ask an Israeli, who do you think Jesus is, is a great way to start a conversation. As the campaign continues, are you expecting that you're going to see the tide of opinion change in Israel? 
We have to, because when you give people information, uh, Israelis are curious. And, you know, 5,000 now have received New Testaments from us, and that's just the beginning. If they really read the New Testament and open their minds to the person of Jesus, he's so compelling. They can't help but be drawn to him. And I think it's the power of God's word and the work of the Holy Spirit and the faithfulness of some Christians who are willing to stand up and take the lumps so that his name might be known. God will do the rest. David Brickner, Executive Director of Jews for Jesus. You're listening to The Olive Tree with me, Julia Fisher, the program that brings you a biblical perspective on the news coming out of Israel, direct from believers who live there, both Jews and Arabs. The Jews for Jesus teams working in Israel at the present time are all remarkable people with their own stories to tell. We'll hear more stories from them in future programs. It's striking that the teams are comprised of both Jewish and Arab believers, which in itself demonstrates that one of the deepest things God is doing in the Holy Land today involves both people groups working together in unity and peace, in mutual love and respect. The Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund is a small charity based in the UK that seeks to understand and support believers living in Israel and the Palestinian areas. People who find themselves caught between a rock and a hard place, simply for believing in Yeshua. So, if you would like to receive our bi-monthly newsletter or join our next tour to Israel and meet some of the people you hear on this programme, then please get in touch. You'll find more information and articles on our website, www.olivetreefund.org where you can also leave a donation. Or you can write to me, Julia Fisher, at the Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund, P.O. Box 850, Horsham, RH12 9GA. That's in the UK. So thank you for your company today. Join me at the same time next week with more news and interviews from the Holy Land. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.